Are you alone? You're working now or you're in lockdown? Oh, no, you're working. Oh, you're working. Okay. <laughs> you do travel agent, isn't it? Yes, sir. You're a travel agent, is it? You're no, a... my brother, Tulsi Gold. Huh? My brother, Tulsi Gold, isn't it? Oh, Tulsi. He's in Macro now. He's in Macro now, is he? Yeah, he got stuck in the lockdown. <laughs> Lucky, yeah? In my part. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't see many people. I don't go around. Oh. Because. By looking at you, why you get so inspired? In, in, I, it must be like hot in my opinion. Uh -huh. It must be hot there in my opinion. Oh, right? oh, it's very hot today, yeah. Today. But, I, but, but we see still you don't have the fan much. Your fan is still hot. No, I have a fan. Look, it's my fan. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Raj. <laughs> If you see a sweet fan, it's off, and you get inspired. No, I just put it, I put it off. I put it off. I, I thought I'd just put that small one on. It's enough. Because it's okay. in the night. It's not so hot now. And I, I often, I like to use this, you know. <laughs> my hand. <laughs> yeah. I find this very nice. Yeah, well, you save electricity in that. <laughs> Keep me awake. <laughs> otherwise, yes. otherwise, I fall asleep. So, can I begin? Or do I have yes, to... Should I wait for Jai Govinda or what? No, I think you can begin that. Hare Krishna Maharaj is under the He is logging in now, Maharaj. Just a minute, he will log in. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Sorry, Marat, I got delayed slightly today. Okay, so I can begin now? Yes, yes, Master. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namah Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakaupa Darubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaihevacha Patitanam Pavan Hebyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So welcome everyone to our ongoing study of the Srimad Bhagavatam at the level of Bhakti Vaibhav. And we are on the fifth canto and today we're looking at chapter 19 which is entitled about the residents of Jambudweep offering prayers. And we, we began the chapter, however, with a description of uh, the residents of Kimparusha offering prayers to Lord Ramachandra. 
That was the residence of Kimpurusha, led by Hanuman and Sugriva, other great monkeys, bears, Vamanas. They offered their heartfelt prayers to Lord Ramachandra. And then we heard also about Narada Muni and the residence up in Badarik Ashram, which is part of Bharat Varsa, and how they offered prayers to Narayan Rishi, who is the worshipable deity in Bharat Varsa. So, before we go on to uh, discuss about Bharat Varsa, we want to just review and remind you about the situation of Bharat Varsh, how Sukadeva Goswami was describing in this section, beginning chapter 16 up to chapter 19, we've been hearing about Bhumandala. Bhumandala is seventh, seventh in the, among the 14 divisions in the universe. <coughs> This is one of the reasons why I don't like to put the fan on, it makes me sneeze. Okay, so uh, the resident, uh, Bhumandala is seventh in the universe of 14 different divisions. And in Bhumandala, Bhumandala was just simply one plane up to the time of Priyavrata. It was from the time of Priyavrata that the different divisions were made, the islands were made. And you will recall we heard about Priyavrata driving his chariot behind the sun god and he created these different divisions within Bhumandala so that there are actually seven dweeps. Seven dweeps, because he had seven sons. Actually, he had ten sons, but three of the sons took sannyas. So that's a relief. When three of the sons go off and take sannyas, he doesn't have to worry about them anymore. They've gone. They're simply under the care of the Supreme Lord. So, the seven sons were given custody of Bhumandala. He, Priyavrata had divided Bhumandala into seven islands, seven dweeps, and the, remember that there was different uh, liquid substances. The was not an ordinary ocean, but certainly around Jumbo Dweep, there was salt water, but then the next dweep, there was sugar cane juice, and then there was liquor, and then there was yogurt, and then it came to, the, there was uh, 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 molasses, I think it's one of them, and then uh, clear water, clear fra fragrant water on the outer region. So that's Bhumandala. Priyavrata divided it into seven, and the innermost island, Jambu Dweep, was given to his eldest son, Agnidhar. Agnidra was given custody of the Jambu Dweep, and Jambu Dweep, of course, in, on Jambu Dweep there's Mount Meru. So Agnidra, he divided Jambu Dweep among his sons. After he ruled it for some time, then he divided uh, Jambu Dweep among his sons, and he had nine sons. So, Agnidar, uh, well, the, 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 we saw the divisions of Jambu Dweep, right? One Mataji had a beautiful, nice uh, illustration. You can see the mountain ranges, how they divide up 
the different regions of Jambu Dweep. And in the center is the Mount Meru. And Bharat Vars is on the southern side of Jambu Dweep. So this island, this part, which the southernmost region, Bharat Vars, originally it was given to the son of Agnidra, it was given to Nabi. Nabi was, and it, it was named Aj Ajanaba, Ajanaba. That was the original name of uh, the planet Earth, it was called Ajanaba, after this Nabi, who was one of the sons of Agnidara, who was the son, one of the sons of Priyavrat. So the different regions of Jambudvip were named after the other sons of Agnidar. So that's how you have like Kimpurusha and Ketumala and all. these are all names of the different sons of Agnidar. But Ajanabha, he he was uh, he was a very great soul and it was arranged that he was married to Meru Devi and when they married they decided they wanted to have a child who was as good as the Lord himself. So the Lord told them that you want a child as good as the Lord himself, you need to have me because there's nobody equal to me. So I'll have to come myself as your child. So the Lord came as the child of Nab Naba and Meru Devi, and he came as Lord Rishavdev. So Le Lord Rishavdev succeeded Naba, uh, Ajanaba. Lord Rishavdev was ruling, and Lord Rishavdev, he had 100 sons, and of his 100 sons, the eldest son was Bharat. And we know from the Srimad Bhagavatam, you've studied already in this fifth canto, how Lord Rishabhdev instructed his sons that they should all take instruction from Bharat. When Lord Rishabhdev retired into the forest to do austerities, he instructed his 100 sons that Bharat will lead you all and you take instruction from him. So Bharat Maharaj ruled the world for a very long time. Well, the other brothers, there was 81, they were brahmanas, they were performing uh, ritualistic activities according to Vedic, the Vedas, Vedic sacrifices. 81 of them were brahmanas. Nine were the Navyogindras. Then there was Bharat, and there were other nine, other nine sons of Rishabhdev, and they were given custody of Bharatvars. After Bharat because Bharat, he ruled for a long time, and then he retired. He went all the way up to Ganduki, up there in the Himalayas, and he was up there. But of course he had a problem, he got attached to a deer. He got attached to a deer, and uh, he became a deer in his next life. And then after that, then he took birth in the family of a Brahmana, and then he went back to Godhead. So his going back to Godhead was delayed. Anyway, Bharat Maharaj, when he retired, when he went up to the Himalayas and renounced everything, then his younger brothers, nine younger brothers, they took charge of Bharat Vars. It was during Bharat Maharaj's rule that the name of the, the, of, of the earth was changed from Ajanaba, it became known as Bharat Vars. And after Bharat retired to the mountains, his nine sons, his nine brothers rather, they took charge of Bharat Vars. And the Bharat Vars was divided also into different tracks. So there are nine divisions in Bharat Varsh. 
and the southernmost region is where our earth is. It's called Bharatkanda. So it said when, when a samskara is performed, then at the time of performing samskars, it's customary to describe, you have to mention the place where you are. So they will begin by saying, and we're in the Bhum Mandala and in the Jambu Dweep and in Bharat Varsa and in Bharat Khanda and then a particular place in Bharat Khanda where we are. So you can see Earth is a tiny part of the Bhum Mandala. Sometimes people think that Bhu Mandala means Earth, but Earth is just like a tiny part of Bhu Mandala. And Earth is, it, even the Bharat Varsa, the whole of Bharat Varsh, is that there's other parts to it. So the, the, it's not just only what we think. We, we have a very limited conception of, the, of existence within the universe. We're very small parts of this universe. And this, this earth planet is also a very small part. But it's an important part because as we'll hear, the Bharat Vars is there. And Bharat Vars means karma bumi, the place of karma. The other Bhumis, the other lands, and the other Varshas there in Jambu Dweep, they're for sense gratification. That's Boma Swarga, the heaven on earth. And this is it's Boma Swarg where people come to enjoy. They have their sense gratification there. They come in and, and they use up their piety, exhaust their piety, enjoying sense gratification. But Bharat Varsa is a place where people earn their karma and will determine their future, where they're going to go, what's going to happen to them. So we're going to hear now about Bharat Varsa in this section of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So we got up to text number 10 and we heard how Na Narada Muni is going to offer his prayers to Naranarayan Rishi. And that begins in text number 11, where Narada Muni is praying to Naranarayan Rishi and he's, he, uh, oh, it's also mentioned, I should mention also, it's mentioned about Suvarni, Suvarni Manu. Now Suvarni Manu, he's the, the next Manu. The present Manu is Vaivashwata Manu. And the next Manu is Savarni Manu. And Savarni Manu, he's getting training from Narada Muni. That was described in text number 10. The great sage Narada instructed the tenets, the tenets of this transcendental literature to Savarni Muni in order to teach those inhabitants of Bharat Varsa who strictly follow the principles of Varnashram Dharma how to achieve devotional service of the Lord. So this is one of the functions of Narada Muni which he's doing, he's training up, he's like the, the mentor of this Savarni Muni and he's preparing him for taking up that post of being Manu. So Narada Muni is also of course propagating devotional service and here we see him offering his prayers to Nara Narayan Rishi. He's describing Nara, Nara Narayan Rishi, he is the spiritual master of all Paramahamsas who are the most exalted human beings. So you could just imagine, what is the position of Narayan Rishi? 
that they're the guru of the, the, the he is the guru of the Paramahamsas. The Paramahamsas, they're the gurus of everyone, but they also have the guru, Nara Narayan Rishi. He's their guru. And he's, he's also the master of the self-realized. So let me offer my respectful obeisances at his lotus feet. Hearing this, I'm reminded of like very senior sannyasis in our movement, just like uh, Tamal Krishna Goswami, when he was present, he was like the guru of the sannyasis. The sannyasis are the guru, they're the gurus of others, but their guru, <laughs> they had the, you know, above them was somebody like Tamal Krishna Maharaj, who was very senior, very strict, very renounced. And he would guide them and point out any of their shortcomings. So here you have Narada Muni, he's offering his prayers to Nara Narayan Rishi, that they're the guru of the Paramahansas, and they're the guru of the self-realized souls. So certainly you have to be very careful, very respectful to them. And they're residing up there in Badarika Ashram. Going ahead to the next text, we will hear more. Text number 12 describes Narada, the most powerful saintly sage. Oh, let me share the screen so that you can also follow. Some people may be watching, they may not have a text. Uh, okay, just a minute. Let me open the, the screen. Okay. So text number 12 describes Narada Muni, uh, how he, he uh, worships Nara Narayan Rishi by chanting the following mantra. And the mantra describes the position of the Nara Narayan Rishi. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the master of the creation, maintenance and annihilation of the visible cosmic manifestation, is free from false prestige. Although to the foolish he appears to have accepted a material body, he is unaffected by bodily tribulations like hunger, thirst and fatigue. And he is the witness who sees everything. His senses are unpolluted by the objects he sees. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto that unattached, pure witness of the world, the Supreme Soul, the Personality of Godhead. So some of the wonderful qualities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are described in this verse. In the purport, Prabhupada talks about Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna, of course, not different. Narayan Narayan Rishi is one of his expansions, one of his incarnations. So, not different from the Lord. So, in the purport, Prabhupada talks about how the Lord has a transcendental form. So, he's not going to be affected by false prestige. Material world, we're very affected by our prestige. We're very attracted by our senses, we're controlled by our senses. Talks, Prabhupada, uh, Narada Muni says, he is a witness who sees everything, but his senses are unpolluted by the objects of the senses. And Prabhupada gives the example how a man sees a beautiful woman, he becomes attracted. In the same way a woman sees a man, she becomes attracted because we are controlled by the objects of our senses. But that is not true for the Supreme Lord. For Nara Narayan Rishi, that is not true, that he is transcendental. He's not affected. His senses are unpolluted by the objects he sees. And he's not affected by the material traits, the, the hunger and thirst and fatigue, 
you know, we're coming up, not this Ekadasi, the next Ekadasi will be Pandava Nirjal. You know, for us it, that's a big thing. One day, Pandava Nirjal, oh, fasting, no water, it's a great austerity. But for people like Narayan Rishi and for the Supreme Lord Krishna, this is nothing. It's not, not a deal, no big deal at all. For people who are accustomed to that kind of austerity, it's no problem at all. Because they're detached from the body. They're, they've overcome all these urges of the body. And of course the Lord, He doesn't have a material body. He has a fully transcendental spiritual body. So we have to always remember the distinction how the Lord's body is Satchitananda and our body is Asat, Nirananda and Achit, just the opposite. And He's always unattached and we are very easily attached. Then Narada Muni continues praying, He's speaking about how Lord Brahma uh, Lord Brahma explains the yoga process and Lord Brahma self-realized. So he said at the time of death all yogis give up the material body with full detachment simply by placing their minds at your lotus feet. This is the perfection of yoga. Perfection of yoga, antanarayana anta smriti, at the end of life we have to be able to remember the Lord. So, this is the final test for all of us. We have to be able to fix the mind on the form of Krishna. This is important, to be able to bring the mind. At that, at that time, when we're going to give up the body, we have to be able to fix the mind on the Lord. And Prabhupada talks about, even one may be sinful, even one may have had a lot of bad habits, but still at the end of life, somehow they may be able to think of the Lord. And Prabhupada quotes, Apichet Sudaracharo, even if one's sinful, but still if he is fixed in transcendental knowledge, then he can achieve the supreme destination. So devotee wants that destiny, we want to be able to think of the Lord this is very important for us to go back to Godhead. Prabhupada said, certainly he will return home back to Godhead without a doubt. Of course we may wonder, well is it really possible to be fully absorbed at the time of death? So then Narada Muni is talking, he's, he's giving us some, he's pushing us, he's saying, he's saying, what is the good of us studying all these Shastras? If at the time of death we're, we're, we're going to be attached to the body. If we are afraid of giving up this body at the time of death, what is the good of us studying and reading all these scriptures? The whole purpose of us stud studying and going through all these scriptures is so that we will become detached from this material body. We don't want to have any attachment. All of our scriptures are encouraging us to get detached, to give up that attachment. So Narada Muni is speaking about this, that people who are absorbed in thought, they're thinking about their family and their wives and their money. What is the good of all that? We're so attached to this body, what is this body? It's just full of stool and urine, horrible substances and we're afraid to give it up, that's, that's stupid. We spent so long studying the scriptures and chanting mantras and worshipping the Lord and we don't want to give up the material body, we must be mad. So in the purport, Prabhupada writes, just reading a little bit here from the purport, if, despite practicing bhakti yoga and studying all the Vedic literature, one is afraid of giving up his bad body, 
which is the cause of all of his suffering, what is the use of his attempts to advance in spiritual life? The secret of success in practicing yoga is to become free from bodily attachment. So very powerful, very, unver very crucial for our practice of Krishna consciousness. We have to develop this de disgust for the material world. And the, well, we have to understand that this material world is not our real home. And when the time comes, we have to let go. We have to just let go of everything and hold on to Krishna. So that's the important instruction given here in that verse. Going ahead to chapter 15, uh, text 15 in this chapter. Narada Muni is praying to Narada Rishi, kindly help us by giving us the power to execute bhakti yoga so that we can control our restless mind and fix them upon you. Of course, the mind is so restless, very difficult for us to control the mind. Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna said he couldn't do it. It was difficult for him. But Krishna said, well, it's possible. Constant practice and detachment, right? Abhyasena chukontiya vairagena chagriyate. Krishna said, I know it's difficult, but practice and detachment. In other words, you, we have to let go and we have to be willing to practice. Narada Muni said, we are all infected by your illusory energy. Therefore, we are very attached to the body, which is full of stool and urine and to anything related with the body. Except for devotional service, there is no way to give up this attachment. Therefore, kindly bestow upon us this benediction. So this is a very good benediction to get, to be able to control the mind and to remember the nature of this material body. You know, we have our eyes, we're looking at bodies and we're thinking, oh, some, someone has a nice body. Oh, that person has a nice body, a nice bag of stool and urine, right? We should control the mind with this kind of knowledge. Of course, this, this very powerful preaching like this, this is coming from Narada Muni and he's glorifying Narayan Rishi. So this is you know, very appropriate for these kind of people. They're very renounced and Narada Muni is a brahmachari, Narada Narayan Rishi. They're, you know, they're the supermost human beings. They have no attraction to the material world. But we should aspire to follow in their footsteps. We should aspire to develop that similar kind of appreciation and this, that, to see with that kind of knowledge. So, very powerful preaching. In the purport, Prabhupada says, the perfect yogi system, the perfect yoga system consists of always thinking of Krishna, always engaged in devotional service, always worshipping Krishna, and always offering obeisances unto Him. I think you've all heard these things before, right? This is the the most confidential knowledge. At the end of the ninth chapter, Krishna states these four things. And then again, in the eighteenth chapter, at the end of the eighteenth chapter, he tells us again, the most confidential knowledge. Right? In the eighteenth chapter, you've got confidential. Uh -huh. Yes, question? Yes, this is the shooter, right? Huh? Yes, right. That's the verse. 
Yes, that's the verse that's stated twice in the Bhagavad Gita, right? Very important. Four things which we can easily do, and this is the, the yoga system. We have to practice these things, and in this way we can overcome the attachment to the body. The more we practice like this, then we'll get free. Right? We have to become attached to Krishna. So, use the body for these kind of things, thinking of Krishna. How do we think of Krishna? By chanting his name and by reading Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam helps us to think of Krishna. Engaging in his devotional service, worship, like we have deity worship, and oh well that's coming off, engaging in devotional service, worshipping Krishna and offering obeisances unto him. So these four items help us to get free from our attachments, the bodily relationships. We have to change the attachment from the material to the spiritual. So we have to practice. In this way, practice makes perfect. All right, going ahead, verse number 16 in the tract of land known as Bharat Varsha. As in Ilavritavarsh, there are many mountains and rivers. Remember Ilavritavarsh? Where is that? Parmananda? Do you remember Ilavritavarsh? I Yes? It's where the Parhat Maharaj is staying with in worshipping God Nashiva? No. That... no. Lord Shiva was Hare Krishna. Yes. Lord Shiva was worshipping Sankarsana. Yes, right. Lord Shiva is worshipping Sankarsana there. Where is it? It is in the middle of the Jambudvipa. Right, it's right in the center, right? Ilavrita Varsha. Right, it's right in the center there of Jambudvip. It's the central region where Mount Meru is. And uh, Lord Shiva is worshipping Sankarshan there, remember? We were saying, you can, you, people enter there, they become women. Lord Shiva is there with Bhavani and they have 60 billion maidservants waiting on Bhavani. And any man comes there, they get changed into women. Not the whole region. Not all of Elavritavars, just that one part, that one mountain where Lord Shiva is residing. There are many other things going on in Elavritavars, many other pastimes taking place there, many other people involved there. But Lord Shiva also has his one area there, and that's a little special there. Okay, so Elavritavars is there, right in the center of Jambudweep. And uh, the tract of land known as Bharatvars, Bharatvars right on the south there, on the southern side, and there are many mountains and rivers, right? We heard about how the Ganga comes down from Mount Meru and branches into four rivers, makes four branches. You have the Alakananga coming to the south, and you have Sita to the east, and you have uh, Bhadra to the west, and, oh, Chakshu to the west and Bhadra to the north, like that, the four different branches of the Ganga coming down Mount Meru and then flowing across different sections of Jambu, of Jambu, uh, uh, of uh, Bhumandala. Okay, so there are many mountains and mentioned here, the names of many of these different mountains in this region. Men mentions also, Govardhan is mentioned, of course, one of the important mountains, but there are many other mountains also. And then, text 17 and 18 mentions about rivers. Two of the rivers are mentioned as very great. They're called Nadas, the Brahmaputra and the Shona. 
And there's many other rivers mentioned, and we know some of the names. There's the Godavari is there. Kaveri is there. So many of some of the rivers we know. The Yamuna is there, Saraswati is there, Gomati is there, Sarayu is there. Okay, so so you can see we know many of these different rivers are known. And then inhabitants of Bharatvarsh are purified because they always remember these rivers. Sometimes they chant the names of these rivers by mantra. And sometimes they go directly to the rivers to touch them and bathe in them. Thus the inhabitants of Bharatvars become purified. Right? When you're taking your shower, do you chant? Ganga cha yamuna ye chaiva godavari sarasatim narmada sindhu kaveri jalismin sanandim kuru or maybe you just chant about Ganga. Tvai me nanya vishaya madir madu pate sakrit ratimudva tadada gangi voda mudan vadi. Right? As the Ganges forever flows to the sea, let my attraction to you be drawn in the same spontaneous way. Queen Kunti prays like that. So all these rivers are transcendental. Just by remembering them, touching them or bathing in them, we become purified. And Prabhupada said, this practice is still going on. Certainly even today, you go to the Ganga, you go to the Yamuna, wherever the, holy wherever the river is, you'll see there's people there, they're taking advantage to bathe, take their bath in the river. Okay, so many rivers are flowing there in Bum and Bumandala. Text 19 The people who take birth in this tract of land are divided according to the qualities of material nature. And we hear about how people, according to their mode of nature, some are in passion, some are in goodness, some are in ignorance. So it's the nature of this particular tract of land that everyone, according to one's past karma, is going to take birth in exactly according to his karma. He's going to, this body which we have today is the result of our karma from before. So if one's position is ascertained by a bona fide spiritual master and one is properly trained to engage in the service of Lord Vishnu, according to the four social divisions and the four spiritual divisions, one's life becomes perfect. So, very important, make our life perfect. Of course, this is, they're, they're stressing here about Varnashram. Uh, Lord Chaitanya, he was not so much concerned with Varnashram. Although the verse is there, it's quoted in the purport from the Vishnu Purana, Varnashrama Charapata Purushena Parapumam Vishnora Rajate Pumsa Panta Nanyat Tosa Nanyat Tosha Karanam Nanyat Tat Tosha Karanam Right, I forget it. But by practicing Varnashram, it's very pleasing to the Lord. And you can satisfy the Lord. And this is a means of, uh, one means of perfection. But Lord Chaitanya said, this is external. But still, it's important. It's just having Varnashram within a society. What are the benefits? What's the advantage of having Varnashram in a society? on an individual basis and on a collective basis. Do you see any advantage 
Or what's the disadvantage if there's no advantage? Of course, Buddhism, they reject this. They say that this Varnashram system, this is, it doesn't give people an equal opportunity. People want a classless society. They don't want these distinctions. And we see even in India today, there's that kind of mood that they, they can't try to give more rights for the people who are born in the less auspicious circumstances. What's the advantage, however, of Varnashram? Anybody? Someone? I have some rights. Yes? Uh, Maharaj, uh, there will be harmony in the society. All the four classes are uh, uh, having equal responsibility. Equal responsibility? Well? Like, like, like Brahmanas, you know, they are the educated class of the society. Uh, they will uh, train the people, they educate the people, then Kshatriyas, they protect the uh, state or the country, then the Vaishyas, they do the Goraksha and also they help in trading and the Shudras, they worship, I mean, they, they help in all other classes. In that way, there is a, uh, if it is implemented perfectly, there is a perfect harmony in the society, Maharaj. Yes. How, how, how can it be implemented properly? What's the important point? What was the failure of the Varnashram system? Why did it fall apart? Yeah. Actually, uh, the, this uh, four thing varnas form because of the guna karma. But in recent times, they are taking on uh, focusing on the birth, which family they born, and they are deviating the subject. So here, yeah, that is a thing is creating the problem. Yes. It's not uh, our gunas and karmas. We are going on just birth. So it's depriving us to progress in the transcendental path. Yes, right, very good, right, because the, everything became based on birth. So we have to recognize every individual's nature and they have to, everyone has to be engaged according to the nature. That's the good thing about Varnashram, that it recognizes every individual's nature and engages him according to his actual psychophysical nature. So that is required. A proper give the example, he said, just like when he was in America, there was war with Vietnam and the American government were drafting all the young men and sent, making them soldiers and sending them to Vietnam to fight war. And the men didn't want to go. He said, the men didn't want to go because they're not Kshatriyas. He said, you can't make everybody into a Kshatriya. So some people have the Kshatriya nature, some people don't. But in the wartime, they wanted everybody to go and fight. And so this was a failure. You know, somebody else, you know, if you ask them to be a Brahmana, if you ask them to sit and read and chant, study Srimad Bhagavatam, they can't do it. They don't want to do it. It's not their nature. But you, you let them go and work in the fields, they're happy. And Prabhupada saw that in Mayapur. He said some of the, some of the devotees, they have to, they, they should work. They're not meant to sit and try to study. Their nature is more for working. And let them go and work with the fields and take care of the cows and plow the fields and harvest the crops like that. Everybody has a particular nature and that nature should be encouraged. But at the same time, without discrimination, not that one person is better than another. Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Striyo Vaishastata Sudras Tepiyanti Paramgati. Even though one may be of lower birth, he can achieve the supreme destination. So this is often forgotten, so much discrimination and prejudice. And so this is why we have chaos in the world today. So Prabhupada writes about it. You can see here I've marked it in the purport. 
In the name of secular government, unqualified people are taking the supreme governmental positions. No one is being trained to act according to the principles of Varnashram Dharma, and thus people are becoming increasingly degraded and are heading in the direction of animal life. So people, they, they, don't, they don't get proper opportunity to engage themselves according to their nature. So the result is they just become animals. But Prabhupada says at the end here of the purport, the Krishna consciousness movement, however, is being propagated all over the world to re-establish the Varnashram Dharma system and thus save human society from gliding down to hellish life. So Prabhupada's mood and mission is being described there. The Krishna consciousness movement can establish the the Varnashram system, engage people according to their psychophysical nature and organize the society that people work together, as you say, with harmony and cooperation and loving and caring for each other, helping each other. We're all part of the social body. We need, he we need a head, we need hands, we need legs. It's not that we only need brahmanas. We need arms and legs, we need workers, we need kshatriyas, we need vaishyas to feed the people. Excuse me. Okay, so establishing the Varnashram, very nice. Then life becomes successful. Let's see. Text number 20. After many births, when the results of one's pious nature, one's pious activities mature, one gets an opportunity to associate with pure devotees. Then one is able to cut the knot of bondage to ignorance, which bound him because of varied fruit of activities. So, uh, the point is being made, liberation means to understand our actual spiritual nature, our position in relation to Krishna. Not just simply understanding I'm not the body, but actual full realization, to know our uh, actual position in relation to Krishna. Muktirhitvayitarupam svarupena vayavastata. Prabhupada quotes that verse from Srimad Bhagavatam that real liberation is to understand our relationship with Krishna, our position in the spiritual world. So just to become Brahma Bhutta, that is the beginning of devotional service. We have to go on from there and understand more what is our actual spiritual position. Quoting from Prabhupada's purport, a living entity becomes established in spiritual blissful life when he fully understands that his happiness depends on spiritual self-realization, which is the basic principle of ananda, and when he is eternally situated in the service of the Lord, who helps, who has no other Lord above him. This, this is a, an interesting point. Uh, I remember one time we were doing a college program. Uh, this was over in USA. I was with Jayadweda Swami. And we were, Jayadweda Swami gave a wonderful lecture how Krishna is the Supreme Lord and there's no one above him. So, you know, these students sometimes they're really dumb. Although it was a university and they're supposed to be educated, but this student was asking, well, you say, you say nobody's above Krishna, but somebody must be above Krishna, you know. You, you say, we're all under Krishna, but who's over Krishna? Must be somebody above him, you know. How is it nobody is above him? There must be somebody above him. 
they could not, could not understand the principle that God means the supreme controller, that that person who is above all others. So this point is coming out in this section, that there is no one above him. And this point is being mentioned again and again in, by these, in these prayers by the people of Jambadweep, that there is no one above the Supreme Lord. Although he appears in his different forms, his different incarnations, but there's no one above them. They are the Supreme Lord. That is sometimes just beyond the intelligence of some of these materialistic minded people. So we're hearing more about the glories of Bharat Varsa. Text 21. Since this human form of life is a sublime position for spiritual realization, all the demigods in heaven speak in this way. How wonderful it is for these human beings to have been born in the land of Bharat Vars. They must have executed pious acts of austerity in the past or the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself must have been pleased with them. Otherwise, how could they engage in devotional service in so many ways? We demigods can only aspire to achieve human births in Bharat Vars to execute devotional service. But these human beings are already engaged there. So, the demigods are described, how much they appreciate the good fortune of the people in Bharat Vars, that they have the opportunity to be engaged in devotional service. And Prabhupada quotes this verse, which is quote, stated by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Bharata Bhumite Haila, the one who takes birth in the land of Bharat Vars is very fortunate. He, he should make his life perfect and then he should make others also perfect. Give that good fortune to others. Work for the benefit of others. So that's a very important feature of Krishna consciousness. That it's not just for our own benefit. Right? And the purport Prabhupada writes, if one makes his life successful in devotional service, <coughs> and then preaches devotional service, in other parts of the world, people throughout the world will actually benefit. So Prabhupada, of course, did this. He took up Krishna consciousness. He was successful in his devotional service. And then he went around the world, to all parts of the world, to distribute Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada was our Acharya, the founder Acharya. Right? Prabhupada said, in the future there will be many Acharyas. But he was the founder Acharya, that he actually went around this world, around the globe, to distribute Krishna consciousness. Now, actually, previously, when we, when we spoke of kings, it didn't just simply mean this planet, but it meant Bhuma, Bhumandala, the whole of Bhumandala they would rule. Kings like Priyavrata and Rishabdev, they were ruling the whole of Bhumandala. They, were, they had a huge kingdom. And then, uh, as, as, however, that was in the Treta Yuga, and then Dwapara Yuga was reduced a bit. And they were like Maharaj Yudhisthira, he was ruling Jambudvi. And now we have Kali Yuga and the, the tiny earth planet is divided, divided up and, to, and given to so many different rulers. 
we think, oh, somebody's ruling, somebody's ruling America, oh, they've got a big kingdom, a great empire, There's Russia, China, these are big countries, but they're tiny compared to what people used to rule in the past. So the benefit of taking birth in Bharatvarsh is being appreciated by the demigods in heaven. And this is the main point which is made throughout the rest of the chapter. We're going to look at this now and hear how the demigods continue to praise the good fortune of the people on this earth planet. Uh, this is text number 22. After performing very difficult tasks of Vedic ritualistic ceremonies, undergoing austerities, observing vows, giving charity, we have achieved this position as inhabitants of the heavenly planets. Right? For some people that's the goal. They want to go to heaven and this is what they have to do. They have to give charity, do austerities, perform Vedic rituals, do vows and the re result is you go to heaven. But then the, demis, the demigods say, what is the value of this achievement? Here we are, we are very engaged in material sense gratification. Therefore we can hardly remember the lotus feet of Lord Narayan. Indeed, because of our excessive sense gratification, we've almost forgotten his lotus feet. This is a very unfortunate condition for the demigods. Of course we should understand the demigods, while they're devotees, they're not pure devotees. And you can see the difficulties they have because there's so much, they have so much opportunity for sense gratification that it doesn't make devotional service any easier. So we have to be very careful. We should appreciate the opportunity which we are given on this earth planet. We are given this opportunity which even the demigods envy. The demigods are thinking these people on earth are so fortunate they're thinking, we're unlucky. We, we, they had to go to the higher planets. He said here, therefore the demigods even regret having been elevated to the higher planetary system. The denizens of the heavenly planets regret that they could not take full advantage of being born in the land of Bharat Varsh. We have to understand that Previously, they were in the land of Bharat Vars. And when they were in the land of Bharat Vars, they simply did these pious activities. And the results of their pious activities, they went to heaven. So the demigods regret that they didn't take the opportunity to do devotional service. Instead, they just did punya karma. And their punya karma, took them to the higher planets. So that was the problem. And then what happens that in the higher planets they have their sense gratification and we're hearing very difficult for them to remember the lotus feet of the Lord. And the problem, they'll have to come back. They'll come back to earth. And they use up some of their pious activities. They come down from from the Swarga, Divya Swarga and they come down to Jambudweep and there in Boma Swarga they have more sense gratification. Remember how long do they live on, Bilva, on Boma, Swarga, Boma Swarga? Boma Swarga they have a lifetime, how long? 
Anybody remember how long is a life? Maharaja, Pretaiza, those who live in Pretaiza, 10,000 years. 10,000 years, right. They have a life of 10,000 years in the Boma Swarga. And they have bodies like demigods, powerful, strong, healthy, and their bodies don't suffer wrinkles and old age, none of these things. And so they're having a lot of sense gratification and the people are very good looking. There's so much enjoyment, heavenly enjoyment. So that's the result of all their punya karma, more sense gratification. So the demigods, they're appreciating the good fortune of a birth on Bharat Varsh, take advantage of the birth on Bharat Varsh to become devoted and to become pure devotees that you can go back to Godhead. You don't have to simply go up and down and up and down in the material world. That uh, Maya Sukh, the happiness of material enjoyment and going up to the heavenly planets and coming down, you know, the, the roller coaster, the samsara, material existence. So we want to avoid that. So the demigods continue, text 23, a short life in Bharatvars is preferable to a life in Brahmaloka for billions of years. Because even if we go to Brahmaloka, we have to return to birth and death. But a life in Bharatvars, although it's in a lower planetary system, is very short. One who lives there can elevate himself to Krishna consciousness and achieve the highest perfection, even in his short life, by fully surrendering unto the lotus feet of the Lord. Thus one attains Vaikuntha, where there is neither anxiety nor repeated birth in a material body. So very wonderful statements here by the demigods describing to us. We should be eager to become Krishna conscious, get the highest perfection. In the short life, a short life in Bharatvars better than these millions of years in Brahmaloka. So again the Prabhupada's purpur is in, 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 in imploring us to understand the good fortune of that kind of birth take advantage, don't waste this opportunity and give up all these other things, other things which may be diverting our mind. Actually, maybe just take a minute or two to discuss amongst yourself what, uh, what actually is the biggest obstacle to our becoming Krishna conscious here on this planet. You know, we're here on this earth planet, which is Bharatvars. So, what is the biggest, op what do we find the greatest challenge to our becoming Krishna conscious and doing devotional service? And what would you say is the, the, the best advantage? Which, what advantage do we have? And what's the biggest problem, the biggest difficulty, the obstacle, the biggest obstacle which we face? in trying to become Krishna conscious. Maybe you could just take a partner and reflect on this for a few minutes and then we'll have a discussion on this. Yes, can you take part? Sure, Maharaj. How much time do we have, Maharaj? Like five minutes, five, ten minutes. Okay, Maharaj. I'll put uh, our devotees in the table. <laughs> They can discuss and we'll come back much. Uh, 
I'll create uh, eight breakout rooms. Prabhu, Hare Krishna, Jai Gaur, just take four, four. Four is enough, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, we'll just put the subject for discussion. Uh, subject is, you know, the, the uh, opportunities and impediments in for progress in Krishna consciousness. In Bharata Varsha specifically? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Advantage and disadvantage. Yeah. Right. So I'll put uh, Shitala Mataji, Amrit Padma Mataji, and uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, sorry. It's not working. Okay, I'll create only uh, four groups. Huh? Uh, I'll put Sheetala Mataji, then uh, Radha Madhav, then uh, Shobha also I'll put it in the same group. Then we have, okay, then second group is uh, Parmanand Prabhu. Then we have uh, Ram Krishna Prabhu. Venkat Gopina Prabhu then Nand Kishore Prabhu Okay, you other devotees also there, you can join them. Okay? Hare Krishna. I'm creating group now.
Hare Krishna, Dhanabad Pranams. So, what's it? What's it? Advantage in Bharat verse. Well, the advantage is uh, we have so many uh, uh, incarnations which are taking incarnation in Bharat worship, and so many scriptures are there for us. Yeah. To learn from. Uh -huh. Holy rivers so many... are there. Huh? Holy rivers are there to purify Holy rivers. Holy rivers, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And what's the difficult? Short, what's it? Short duration of life, Maharaj, so what? that we can. Th that's an advantage. That's an advantage, right? Short duration of life. Is that the advantage or is that a disadvantage? Yeah, if we follow the uh, Hadidam, uh, within short period we can go back to Gokhen. So it is an advantage. Is it Maharaj? I am not sure. Yeah, I think it's an advantage, right? Yeah, we think. Short life. Of course, Depends how much we're attached to the body, you know. We don't like to give up the body, that's the problem. Yes, Maharaj, that is the disadvantage that Mataji was saying, you know, Gopi Mataji, the bodily attachment is a disadvantage for us. <laughs> how, how, how much more difficult it must be if you live 10,000 years in a body? You must be get you must be get you get more attached to the body, right? You're in the body ten thousand years. You never want to die. <laughs> but of course, but then they know they know death is coming. Just like we also know death is coming. We also have the warning. We also know we're not going to live more. We're never going to live more than a hundred years. So we also know we have to die. You know, we have the warning. The death warning is there, actually, from the age of 70, they say death warning, Prabhupada said, the Bible says 70, from the age of 70, dead, you're like a dead man, already dead. <laughs> so it is, it is, it is an advantage, advantage to have a short life, Maharaj. It's an advantage, yeah. It's an advantage, short life. As, as I was telling, even though we know that we are going to die in any time, but still we are attached to bodies, still we are attached to our people and our position and all. It's very difficult to come out of that. But if we are fortunate enough to get the association and Guru's mercy, this attachment maybe we can drive it towards the Lord Sri Krishna. That's, that's a blessing I was thinking. Okay. Even though... Yeah. Yeah. Can I say one more poem which I feel? Yes. Bharat. Yeah, because uh, uh, Bharat Varsha is a uh, uh, Dukhalayam. Because of miseries, uh, in some point people realize that uh, uh, this is not for us to. Um, there is a search for uh, supreme truth. Is it? Uh, I don't know. There's a search for the supreme truth. Yeah, the, the because, of because there is the so, kalayam. So much misery. Another, so much suffering. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, this is true. The nature of this world is suffering, right? <laughs> Okay, is everyone back? Ah, yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, we have divided the group into four, so we can take uh, four spokesperson and uh, they will represent each group, Maharaj. All right. So we'll have someone from group number one, spokesman. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. 
Hare Krishna. So, uh, advantages uh, are uh, in Bharata Vasha, uh, we get a lot of association of Acharyas and uh, we can perform the spiritual duties uh, and because the atmosphere is favorable. And then uh, we get the association of dhams and holy places. And the disadvantages uh, people have no proper Shastric knowledge, even though many Shastras are available. And there are many paths, so uh, people get diverted and they can't focus. Then uh, no proper following of Varnashrama Dharma, this is also a disadvantage. Okay, can, can, I hear the, can I hear these faults again? The problems again? It wasn't so clear. Could you uh, just... Yeah. Uh, nobody has proper Shastric knowledge. Uh, they don't have proper Shastric knowledge. No proper Shastric knowledge, okay. And, and there are many paths. No, nobody is, uh, like, many are not admitting that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. All right. There's so many different uh, bogus pr propaganda, so many bogus philosophers. Nobody recognizes yes. Lord Krishna. Yes. And uh, Varnashrama Dharma is not followed properly. That is also disadvantage. Yeah, that's definitely, <laughs> that's a big problem. Trying to get people to follow Varnashram again. <laughs> okay. But the advantage you said, the advantage is the holy dam and the, uh, and holy, the, river. the holy rivers. And, and the association of acharyas. Association with acharyas. Okay. Uh. So you get a lot of opportunity for association, huh? Good. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj Let's hear from group number two. Group number two, who is the spokesman? Jagan Prabhuji, you can tell which are the group uh, numbers because we were in room number one. I was thinking I was in group number one. I don't know whether it was the same. We can, we can say two, bro. Okay. So could yeah. I share? Yeah. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna Maharaj, yeah. kindly accept my humble obeisances. Uh, the topic for discussion was uh, looking at the advantages and disadvantages of being in Krishna consciousness within the Bharata Varsha, specifically to speak of. As we are seeing these discussions basically from the viewpoint of uh, Narada, who is glorifying the aspects of Bharata Varsha and also the incarnations of Narayana Rishis. And also we are seeing the demigods who are speaking and aspiring to be uh, taking birth in the Bharata Varsha. Uh, so as uh, predicted by the Acharyas, the previous Acharyas, and also seeing that the Lord personally has also incarnated here in this particular land, it automatically ascribes for many holy auspicious things, such as uh, holy rivers, as Sridhala Mataji was saying, holy scriptures and holy men. Certainly these things are not uh, so easy to obtain even in higher planets. As the denizens of the heavenly planets are regretting that they could not take full advantage of being born, in, the, in, the, in this place, in those planets, because they are captivated by a higher standard of sense gratification. So, uh, people may be poor or not well educated, and uh, they might be practicing sinful life here in Bharata Varsha. But behold, that the Lord says that I will completely take away all your sins and protect you. So this assurance, we don't see that he's doing this in any of the higher planetary systems. And that's one aspect of it. And the Lord personally also appearing as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and says that uh, simply chant the holy names, take the shelter and uh, everything would be fine. And also the lifespan is very shorter here. So this gives greater advantage for those who actually take the real uh, benefit of this. 
even in a short time if they can actually become krishna conscious and follow that uh, they would be perfect and also it is said that uh, even though someone is worshiping devas or pitris or bhutas or others and some others are worshiping the supreme lord yet all this kind of worship is coming under the vedic frame so there is some kind of a purification that actually happens instead of becoming atheists so those advantages can be definitely taken into but disadvantages are seen by only those who do not make the best of this utility of this human form it just like how even someone is in the demigods planet if he doesn't utilize this in the service of the lord then his life is also equally wasted so is the case even in this bharat varsha in the form of a human being so i would probably say that though there appears to be disadvantages but there is greater advantages and that's why the shastras proclaim so the acharyas are saying so the supreme lord is saying so so if one realizes this point i think he can make the best advantage in a very short time and make his life completely successful because he doesn't have to hop stop and jump between one planet to the other planet but he can straight away walk into vaikuntha loka or could uh, develop the higher love of god and go back to the supreme guru of vrindavan i believe that's the advantage what we have which is offered here in bharat varsha hari krishna i would just question <laughs> I, i would question a little yes maharaj i'm i'm concerned that you said you mentioned about he we don't have to hop 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 over from one place to another on the way back to godhead we can go directly but the problem is to be fully focused on that going back to godhead because there's so much to attract the attention of the whole material world that krishna's whole external energy is so bewildering you know that just hearing about these other regions of jamba dweep is so fascinating that you know the mind could certainly be drawn to to look and to want to enter and to go in there and to enjoy and then going to the higher regions of the material world up to swarga loka then to jana loka maha loka tapa loka satya loka you know there's so many more and more wonderful places there that is really difficult to actually focus that you know this is not for me i don't want to go there i just want to go back to godhead we have to be really really on top of our mind and senses and be able to turn away from all of this attraction of the material energy i i think that that for me that the you know that i think that would be a problem you know how to not get captivated by it yes maharaj i fully agree with uh, the contention but at the same time as uh, being told by narada muni that uh, one who takes up to the path of devotional service under the guidance of a spiritual master he becomes saved thereby his good fortune actually comes by if one tries to make his own attempt and try to do things around then he's going to really mess it up so the protection comes from a spiritual master and that's the advantage one should actually take otherwise the attraction of this material world is so much it's an impediment it's like a filter it doesn't allow anyone to just get into it and as you explained in the previous chapters that uh, going into these other eight varshas other than the bharat varsha requires qualification so even there if someone wants to enjoy one cannot simply aspire just being in bharat varsha that he wants to go there he must take efforts to actually become qualified and we see that such as i mean such path of acquiring qualifications is even more tougher than becoming a devotee so taking advantage of that simply by chanting the holy name to serve the lord and associating one can actually make more sense in in that way oh that's a very nice point i have that's a very good point to make that you have to work so hard to develop these material facilities but to, to be a devotee and to surrender to krishna is such an easy thing 
So if we can just understand that and take shelter of the process of devotion to Krishna, which is so easy and so joyful, whereas other things, the material rewards, to get rewards in the material world require so much effort and so much austerity and ultimately it's just something which is temporary. So thank you very much Prabhu, very nice. We'll go on. Group number three. Yeah, group number three is uh, Pamanan Prabhu, Leoti Gopi Mataji, your team. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jai Bhattu, I'm Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, as we were discussing, uh, you also visited our room. Thank you so much Maharaj. And a lot of points have been shared by His Grace Ramakrishna Prabhupada and Sitaram Mataji. So there are two few more points which we'd like to add. Uh, as we said, the attachment, the bodily attachment is the biggest disadvantagement here in this whole local because all of our senses are being bombarded by the sense gratifications. The, so much of illusion, so much of Maya is there attacking us. And then we have to really take shelter and of the Lord by transferring that same attachment to Guru and Krishna. Then only is the advantage which we can have here. And as you rightly said, the uh, short life which we have here, it is also an advantage. Short life, because in the short life we can easily go back home, as Ramakrishna Prabhuji mentioned. Easily we can go back home. And one more point which we like to add, Maharaj, is like uh, this is the Karma Bhumi. Worship and uh, because of uh, like you know as Krishna mentioned this uh, uh, this is Dukhalayam Ashashvatam this the place here is like Dukhalayam Ashashvatam and we are forced to take surrender of the Lord so it is a good advantage that we are forced actually kena kena prakarana we are we have to surrender to the Lord Hare Krishna Jai very nice yes Dukhalayam Ashashvatam that is not so heavenly here. <laughs> there, are pro there are problems, there's a lot of suffering, right? There's a lot of suffering in material life here. In Kali Yuga, we heard more and more suffering. We heard about uh, Bhuma, Bhuma Swarga, there is Treta, Treta Yuga there. It's like the happiness of Treta Yuga. But we're here in uh, Bharatvarsh, and it's Kali Yuga and it's suffering, a lot of suffering. So th that, that in itself is a great blessing because too much comfort, too much heavenly life, too much enjoyment and we become, we, we just want to enjoy and we never think about that we have to give it all up and leave it. But the miseries, the difficulties, the tr they make us contemplate more seriously that thank goodness that this life is only temporary, that one day I have to give up this body, I have to get ready to make a success and go back to Godhead. Okay, thank you very much. Very nice points. Let's go ahead to the, the group number four. Yeah, group number four is uh, Subhna Vrinda Mataji and Kishore, your team. Uh, Hare Krishna. Okay, okay. Go ahead. No, no, I think you go ahead. Okay, I'll, I'll give one, one point and you can give the other point. Yeah? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandot Padam, this is Subhna Vrinda Devi Dasi. Um, Maharaj, I feel I can quote one uh, shloka. Mamai Vamsha Jeeva Loke Jeeva Bhuta Sanatana. Mana Shishtani Indriyani Prakritishtani Karshati. We are struggling. This is what is the struggle. Even in the lecture, uh, you were a few minutes back saying that when you all went to a university, and uh, you all were putting up a point that Krishna is the supreme and uh, everybody has come from Krishna. He was not ready to accept who is, there is somebody from whom Krishna has come. So our mind is so fragile, our mind is uh, so, so agitated that we, we as jivas are struggling. As if we see uh, the living and all the moving and non-moving out of all those categories, the we jivas are the most, uh, the smallest quantity in the fraction and 
because of our act today we are inside and the animals are outside so this is the mind now uh, which is agitating us and that's the biggest uh, negative point on this boom mandala though we are we are very very fortunate that fortunate is because when krishna uh, left to abode he kept the vedas for us and our acharya shri prabhupad also made all the translations so that it becomes more easier but we are putting reason after reason just not to accept it this is the mind chanchalami mana krishna is even we understand this that mind is like a child and the child every minute has to pull back right every minute every second when we are sitting and chanting we say the the maha mantra the chanting the chaitanya mahaprabhu has given is the most simplest and easiest that we have to chant just one name pure name can take us but we are not able to chant 16 rounds and if we chant 16 or we say we are done we are finished you know we are just about to finish that but we don't know the connectivity and that is the mind uh patita bhavan you can put your point thank you so much thank you so much maji uh, just a few more points uh, maharaj that we discussed so first thing when our uh, group activity was going on there were a uh, phone calls that came in between and there were also some children behind so we put these also as some of our obstacles uh, that we have uh, constant uh, um association uh, among us that kind of puts us down of course um, a krishna conscious family life is different from a karmi family life so one of the obstacles that was put forward by one of the devotees was um uh, having um, uh, a non krishna conscious family around us uh, which kind of uh, creates the obstacles in our practice of devotional service and um, a few other points that we mentioned was short memory and how short lives we have and there is so much to do in this particular lifetime uh, that it feels like there is um, there is no time and then we have all our other material activities that take up most of our effort and uh, and time in itself uh, then the next point was our bodies are not that great as compared to the other planets uh, we are stuck with covid cold fever so many different problems that come in uh, <laughs> which kind of make that also creates these kind of outward obstacles in our practice of devotional service Mm-hmm. so some of the positives yeah. um so we have to accept it as a task of purification like proper mentions it's like um, this world is like a toilet or this lifetime is like a toilet do your job and get out <laughs> so we have to utilize our time chant hari krishna and go back home back to god it it's a very simple process uh that's my uh next one is that um, there are lesser upsides on this planet so sorry we have to take it as a positive that what was that lesser apsaras as compared to <laughs> the heavenly planets again one of the points we do one of the body so uh, and uh, don't have a lot of expectations this is dukhalay mashashvatam this place is meant for troubles so rather than uh, building plans to make ourselves happy over here we should focus on the real goal of life which is to go back home back to god Yeah, nice. That's all. That's all points from this group. Okay, thank you very much, Prabhu. Very interesting. Certainly, you had some good points there. <laughs> nice to hear. But in general, we all consider that the the advantages of Bharat Vars outweigh the disadvantages. At least the uh, the thought of going to heavenly planets and you know hearing about the heavenly planets from the demigods and you know they're very open minded and very uh revealing to us warning us about what is like there in the heavenly planets that is very difficult to remember the supreme lord of course we find it difficult to hear here as you say it's also not easy for us here but it's much harder there and they have the longer life as well and so uh, the longer life means could become more complacent there so there's some urgency here because we know we do have a short life it's not a long life and definitely we have to make use of every moment so this is uh, important for us so thank you very much for the discussion we'll just go ahead here okay first yes hari krishna 
Uh-huh. But I would just like to add one advantage. It was just shared by uh, Malini Bhuti, one of her students. And she said the, the biggest advantage which we have now is because of Srila Prabhupada. Yes, definitely, that's true. Ah, yes. Srila Prabhupada, the ISKCON society, which is the manifestation of Srila Prabhupada. So that's a great good fortune. That's a great help for all of us to become Krishna conscious. And the devotees are always organizing programs and festivals. And this is mentioned in the next verse, text number 24. We're hearing about uh, which places we, we, the demigods are saying, don't go to that place. If there's no, if, if there's no, uh, if there are no devotees engaged in the service of the Lord, or if there's no river of piety, there's no festival of Sankirtan to satisfy the Lord, Sankirtan is recommended in this age. So, of course, these things are very helpful for us. Just as you said, going rivers are very good for us, but certainly the ISKCON temples and the ISKCON programs and all the devotees given to us and Srila Prabhupada's books, Srila Prabhupada's kirtan and lectures, so many wonderful gifts he's given us. Prabhupada given us everything actually. We just have to make use of it for our benefit. So Prabhupada mentions in the purport, very interesting purport, if you take time to read it, he talks about how uh, the earth planet is the best place in the universe. And on the earth planet, the best place in the universe, the best, be best place on earth, the best place is India. And in, the, in India, the best place is Bengal. And in Bengal, the best place is Nadia. And in Nadia, the best place is Mayapur. And then he says, so everybody should come to Mayapur, you should be in Mayapur and take part in the festivals there and distribute prasadam and this way make your life perfect. And by chanting Hare Krishna and distributing prasadam. So this is the advantage of the Kali Yuga, very easy to get perfection. And Prabhupada says in the purple here, I noticed, I marked it, anyone who performs Sankirtan, to please the, the Lord is very, very glorious. So we see to become glorious in the Kali Yuga is not very difficult. We just have to join the Sankirtan. And Prabhupada definitely wanted that, he encouraged all of us, join the Sankirtan as soon as possible. Prabhupada's purport, again Prabhupada writes, if one compares Sankirtan Yagya to other Yagyas, he is a Pashandi, an infidel and is liable to be punished by Yamaraj. So one may think chanting Hare Krishna, Sankirtan, oh that's just enough, that we can do a, we can do a Vedic sacrifice, we can do a Ashwamedha Yagya, we can do Rajasuya Yagya. <laughs> Prabhupada, these are nothing compared to Sankirtan. Chanting Hare Krishna, Sankirtan, it's not just some Karma Kandi ritualistic activity. And if you think like that, that's a great offense, right? The eighth offense, to consider chanting Hare Krishna to be one of the auspicious ritualistic activities offered in the Vedas. So then the demigods go on to make some interesting points about Bharat Varsh and about how the Lord re relates to the devotees in Bharat Varsh. Uh, describes how uh, if obtaining a human body in the land of Varadvars with clear sensory organs to execute the Sankirtan Yagya, but in spite he does not take to devotional service, then he's like an animal, right? And so the same, the same point is again, that we have to take advantage of the Sankirtan movement, very important for us. And then we hear about people worshipping demigods and we learn that we can also worship Lord Krishna through the demigods, but that is indirect worship of the Lord. And the example of the person who worshipped the Lord through worshipping the different demigods was Bharat Maharaj. 
the Bharat Maharaj, because he was a king, so the brahmanas would do ritualistic sacrifices, but he would understand the different offerings which they were making were actually offered to different limbs of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Prabhupada said, this is indirect worship of the Lord. But indirect worship of the Lord also gives the benefit of worshipping the Lord. But better is direct worship. And the purport Prabhupada said, therefore a devotee who directly worships Lord Krishna through staunch devotional service, as recommended in Srimad Bhagavatam, is very quickly elevated to the transcendental position. If we worship the Lord indirectly by going through the demigods, will take longer time. And you may never get there. You may go off. So it's not recommended. Krishna, Krishna doesn't desire it. He didn't praise the worship of the demigods. Rather, Krishna condemned the worship of the demigods. But you can do it. You can worship the Lord through his different limbs. And then, next section is we hear about how one may worship the Lord with material desires. And how Krishna will purify him. And that is a very interesting point. That people come and they worship the Lord. But their motive is to get material benefit. And in the purport, Prabhupada talks about somebody comes... Uh, Krishna is so merciful that he turns a Sakama Bhakta into an Akama Bhakta. So the Sakama Bhakta, who are the example? Who's a Sakama Bhakta? What's the example usually given? Dhruva Maharaj. Yes, right, Dhruva Maharaj. He's a Sakama Bhakta. He came with material desires, but he became Akama Bhakta. He became a pure devotee. He had no, he, get, he lost his material desires, right? Swamin Kritartosmi Varamna Yachi. Dhruva Maharaj said, I don't want anything. I'm fully satisfied because he had got the lotus feet of the Lord. So that is the point that Lord Krishna arranges that somebody comes, they didn't want, they didn't want pure devotion. They came for another reason, but Krishna gave them anyway. He changed their desires. He purified their desires. So example is given just like the child may eat dirt. The child may have dirt in their mouth. But the father will come, he will take the dirt and give the candy, put candy in the mouth. Now the child didn't ask for candy, but the father will give the candy anyway. The same way Lord Krishna will give pure devotion. He will take away the material desires and he will give pure devotion. So both Jiva Goswami and Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, they comment on this verse and they explain about this. Uh, Vishwanath Chakravati describes about how somebody may come to worship the Lord and the Lord, he's not going to give them direct service to him. He will give them bhakti, but he won't give them that bhava. But then Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, he will, give, he will give bhava if they worship him for a long time. If they're very persistent and very determined that they want to get something, then he can, he can give them that bhava. But it comes after a long time. And he mentions also there's a difference between devotees like Dhruva Maharaj and a devotee like Hanuman. Now, Dhruva Maharaj, the Lord had to, had to take away his material desires and push him to become a devotee. But Hanuman, he's naturally a pure devotee. So Hanuman's devotion is on a different level because Hanuman is an, he's an, he's an Akama devotee. He has no material desires. Dhruva Maharaj, he was pushed into becoming a pure devotee. So Dhruva Maharaj's devotion is not on the same level as a devotee like Hanuman. And that is supported here with this verse. So we shouldn't think that we should come with material desires and the Lord will purify us. That is not what Krishna wants. <laughs> 
Rather, better you come like Hanuman. Don't come like Dhruva. <laughs> right? So this is the point. Uh, and the purport, Prabhupada quotes from the Chaitanya Charitamrita about how the little child, uh, the, the, the devotee praying for material desires is compared to the person who comes and asks for poison. Mama, give me poison, give me poison. The mother is not going to give poison to their child. So the same way Krishna sees the devotee coming and asking, give me wealth, give me fame, give me power, give me material success, Krishna is not going to give it. Krishna will give what we really need, which is the shelter of his lotus feet. So that is the ultimate benediction, to get the shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. And then coming up towards the end of the uh, chapter, demigods are saying, we are now living in the heavenly planets, undoubtedly as a result of our having performed ritualistic ceremonies, pious activities, etc. However, our lives here will one day be finished. We pray that at that time, if our merit remains from our pious activities, we may again take birth in Bharatvars as human beings to remember the lotus feet of the Lord. The Lord is so kind that He personally comes to the land of Bharatvars and expands the good fortune of its people. So sometimes the Lord comes Himself and sometimes He sends His pure devotees, just like He sent Prabhupada and He sent uh, other great Bhaktivinoda Thakur and these other great devotees. In Bharatvars, Prabhupada writes in the purport, one is naturally Krishna conscious. And if one further cultivates his Krishna consciousness, by the grace of Krishna, he certainly expands his good fortune by becoming perfect in Krishna consciousness and very easily going back home back to Godhead. So as we heard, with great labour we go to the heavenly planets, but very easily we can go back to Godhead. We just have to understand this easiest thing. You know, sometimes people are wondering, how did we get here? How did we come to this material world? One of Prabhupada's God brothers said, he said, that's the most difficult thing to understand how we got here. He said, the easiest thing to understand is how to get out and how to go back to Godhead. He said, try to understand the easiest thing. We're so stubborn, we always want to do the difficult things, you know. We waste so much time. So then Prabhupada quotes again, expand, talking about the Krishna Consciousness Movement. He said, spreading this facility to human society by opening many, many centers all over the world so that people may associate with the, the pure devotees of the Krishna Consciousness Movement, understand the science of Krishna and ultimately go back home, back to Godhead. So, very nice purport there about the mission of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Then it describes that there are some uh, islands on the edge of uh, Bharat Varsha, mentioned here, the, on the edge of Jambudweep actually, smaller islands surrounding Jambudweep. And they, it said these came due to Maharaj Sagar's sons when they were searching for the horse, that they dug up different areas and their digging up created these islands. So there's eight adjoining islands which come into existence and they're mentioned. But Prabhupada doesn't get into this too much. He simply says, Persons already born in Bharadvars live like cats and dogs, not taking advantage of their birth in this land. They are certainly unfortunate. So Prabhupada is concerned with making our life fortunate. We have to understand what, is, what does it mean to be fortunate? Uh, 
one devotee, I think it was His Holiness Dhanavir Maharaj, he wrote a book, Fortunate Souls, and it's about the Bhakta program, you know, training up new devotees. So, Bharata Bhumite Haila Manusha Janmajar, Janma Sartaka Kare Kara Paro, oh no, what, what, I'm, Bharata Bhumite Haila Manusha Janmajar, Janma, Oh, Brahmanda Brahmite Konya Bhagavan Jeev, Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai Bhakti Lata Bij. That's the verse. Hmm. The, the, when the living entity becomes fortunate, then he gets the Bhakti Lata Bij planted in his heart. And with that seed of devotion, then his good fortune begins. Okay, so we've been hearing about Boma Mandala. Now we're going to go on, next chapter 20, we're going to hear about the universe. The rest of the chapter will be about the universe. So you can look over that before next class. You might like to look over it and try to understand it. It's not easy. <laughs> it's quite challenging. Anyway. Sukadeva so Goswami said, he's told us according to what he had heard from other authorities. Okay, are there any questions? Maharaj? Yes, Prabhu. I have a, mar I have a question, Maharaj. Maharaj, this uh, residents of Jambudvipa, they always pray in this mood, Maharaj, or only sometimes? <laughs> well, Certainly, we hope they're always praying in that mood. That's generally, that's the mood. We heard that the residents in Jambu Dweep, that they never forget the Lord. But at Vars, we have a hard time to remember the Lord, but the residents in the other regions, they never forget the Lord. Although they're having sense gratification, that they're always remembering the Lord. So we should understand that these prayers are certainly there with them. These prayers, of course, are being offered by the leading personalities in each of these regions. And there are many other persons in there. Not all of them may be on the same level. We know Prahlad Maharaj is a very exalted devotee. Hanuman is a very exalted devotee. You know, so these people who are offering the prayers, they certainly feel like that whether or not the other residents there, but they're teaching them the example. They're, they're their leaders and they're teaching them by their example, right? We all, you could say they're like their guru or their mentor or their shiksha guru or something. So we need that. We need to be inspired by good examples. We need persons to show us the right example. Yajyada charity shrista tatta devi tarojana. We, let, we have that tendency to follow. So therefore in these different regions, you can see how the Lord has arranged. In each of the regions, there's a particular devotee there and the Lord is present also in a particular form. The Lord is personally there in one of His expansions just to help these people to remember that although they're having sense gratification, that remember the Lord is there, and these great devotees are there. Now Prahlad Maharaj, Hanuman, you know, they're, they're great. They're not going to get into Maya. They're not going to forget Krishna. And they're offering these prayers. And, and the people who are there with them, they will also be influenced by that association. Just imagine how fortunate they, be, they must be that they have the association with these great devotees. And they're hearing the prayers which they offer. So they're very fortunate. Of course, they may say we're fortunate because we're in Bharatvars that we can go directly back to Godhead. Okay, so that's my comment on that. Any, Thank you, Master. Yes. Any other point? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Master. There's a lot of tract of land, but only Bharatvarsha they praise because is it a not taking birth on this planet, that this planet is part of the land, because we have not seen, it. they are discussing about any other part of the earth. Only India, Bhartavarsha is that talking. 
you should understand Bharat Varsh is not just only India. Yes, uh, Mother. I explained at the beginning of the class, I was explaining that Bharat Varsh, you know, that it's one region of the Jamba Dweep, right? Yeah. And Bharat Varsh was divided among the uh, among the sons of Bharat, uh, the brothers of Bharat Maharaj. Bharat Maharaj, you know, it was named after Bharat Maharaj. Originally it was called uh, Ajanabab Varsh, after Naba Maharaj. Naba was there, and Mer uh, Naba and his wife, and they had the son, Nab Naba and Meru, their son was Rishabdev, and then from Rishabdev came Bharat Maharaj, and Bharat Maharaj ruled, then the name was changed to Bharat Varsh. And then Bharat Maharaj, he went to Himalayas, and then his younger brothers, the nine brothers, they took charge of Bharat Vars. And Bharat Vars was divided into nine regions. And one of the regions is called Bharat Khanda. And part of that Bharat Khanda is this planet. Okay. Thanks, Bharat. Because most of the rivers, it's we see in India, that's why I got the doubt which they mentioned. Well, yeah, sometimes you see rivers named like that, but just like Ganga, you know, Ganga doesn't just flow on, on earth, right? It's flowing many places. It's also there, you know, it's coming from the, coming down, it's Bhagirati, right? Maharaj Bhagirati, it's coming down from Meru Mountain and all these places, so, in the same way these rivers, I, I didn't recognize all the names. Do you recognize every name? No, few, Maharaj. Yeah. Amraparini and all. Yeah, there are a few names, but there's, you know, certainly there's other regions, you know. That's, a, yeah. Yeah, there's other regions, uh, much more regions. So, we know about you, part of Bharat Pars. Okay. All right, so then we'll meet on Sunday night. We'll look at the universe on Sunday. We'll hear about what's going on there. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gorbak Devrinda Ki Jai. Hare Krishna.